Who do you think is China's top money-making internet company? Alibaba? Hmm, it's out of date, man. How about Tencent? Well, their growth rate has slowed down. But guess what? It's now other than ByteDance. You might not have heard of them, but I bet you've downloaded the TikTok application, right? Yeah, that's the company I'm talking about today. Let me tell you, ByteDance is a real deal when it comes to making that deal. In 2023, their revenue grows by a whopping 30% to $110 billion. That means they're not only dominating the domestic market, but also giving Facebook's parent company, Manta, a round for their money. Manta is projected to make $133 billion in revenue this year, while the global internet giants were laying low in 2023. ByteDance was still on a crazy upward trajectory. For ByteDance, a company that believes in making big things happen, the question is on everyone's mind is, how the heck are they making all this money? Well, today I'm gonna spill all the juicy details of ByteDance that give you all that you want to know. I'm Sheila Wang here, and if you want to stay in knowing with the latest and greatest business and investment insights, make sure to smash that like button and hit that subscribe. If you are hungry for a more detailed investment report, don't forget to check out my analysis report down below. So, today, let's dive right in together. First thing first, let's take a look at the six business segments under ByteDance. Douyin, Dali Education, Feixin, Yan Engine, Haoxi Guangyan, and TikTok. Douyin is responsible for the overall development of domestic information and service businesses, while TikTok focuses on the TikTok platform and supports the growth of overseas e-commerce and other extended businesses. That can be seen as the two wings of Biden's traffic ecosystem, driving revenue growth. So, did you get it? The most profitable are these two segments, TikTok and Douyin. Now, let's we move closer. Let's take Douyin as an example. Its revenue mainly comes from three parts. Advertising, revenue sharing from the live streaming gifts, and commissions from e-commerce and other businesses, such as platform service fees, unlike subscription models on long-form video platform. Douyin and TikTok don't offer paid subscriptions, at least not yet. Advertising is the cold source of revenue for Douyin. A former ByteDance employee once revealed that Douyin focuses on two key metrics, daily active user, DAU, and user engagement time. Why? To sell more advertisement, of course. The longer users stay on the applications and more content they browse, the more advertisement can be sold. But hey, let's be real. Excessive and load inevitably decrease users' experience. But adjustments need to be made. You've probably joked about seeing 6 out of 10 videos on Douyin advertisement, right? But it seems like that doesn't bother their top leader of the Douyin because with a massive member of internet users in China contributing significant browsing time, the logic of selling attention makes perfect sense. Recently, according to the mobile data research firm Data.ai mentioned in a report before, that Douyin and TikTok have achieved a cumulative user spending of $10 billion becoming the first non-gaming applications to reach that milestone. But this is not the end of the story. Data AI predicted that by 2024, Douyin and TikTok's revenue will experience even greater growth, with user spending reach $15 billion. And this revenue will surpass other sources' user daily spending over $11 million on their favorite content creators. This trend could make Douyin and TikTok the highest earning mobile applications. But the end of the year of 2024, user weekly usage time will reach 40 hours, a 22% increase from 2023. In fact, every time users browse a video, they indirectly contribute to ByteDance's advertising revenue. Live streaming is another form of content on Douyin. 
In most cases, half of user donations received by the streamers go into Douyin's pocket. Only to someone who used to work in the live streaming industry, it's not common for top streamers to earn millions per month, and usually they get a higher revenue split. But even so, the platform takes about 30% to 40%. Those flashy on-screen donations like Poach, Private Jet, Douyin's number one and Carnival cost 1,200, 3,000, 10,000 and even 30,000 Douyin coins respectively, approximately $120, $300, $1,000 and $3,000. Consider 10 Douyin coins equal 1 yuan. According to data.ai statistics, the US and the Chinese iOS users contribute 60% of user spend on Douyin and TikTok. Amazing, right? Totally $6 billion. Saudi Arabia, Germany, and UK and Japan come next, contributing a combined 16%. With its expansion into incomes, local service, and other fields, Bydance has another revenue source in sight. Every transaction completed by using doing small stores, group buying, and other platforms generates a certain amount of commission. For doing incomes, the commission rate typically ranges from 2% to 5%, depending on the product category. Douyin has also dabbled in various other business branches such as health care, social media, and search. It's truly a challenger in every industry. In summary, behind Biden's rapid revenue and profit growth is a powerful algorithmic distribution model. Incredibly high traffic conversion efficiency and a crazy spirit of exploration and experimentation. The mastermind behind all this is this dude right here. Take a few minutes to peep into the life of China's newest billionaire, Zhang Yiming. Here's how he describes himself. No smoking, no drinking, not into cars or golf. Doesn't play any games. His biggest hobby? Creating products, reading books, and trolling with interesting peeps. And let me tell you, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Now, let's dive into Zhang Yiming and his business empire. In the past year, Bidens have been hiring 150 people every day, with 250 offices worldwide. Those members are mind-blowing, right? Bidens went from zero to 100,000 employees, mainly top-notch intellectuals. Each one has their own personalities, dreams, and opinions. So I'm just wondering how did they all come together and how did they unlock their potentials? So let's we solve this problem. How did Jiang Yiming establish his personal authority? Even to today, Biden hasn't faced any major team issues. Why that you may be asking this problem? Well, let me break down for you. Firstly, kill a strategic planning. In a recent report, they described a moment back in September 2015. Zhang Yiming was in the U.S. attending an event organized by the Jig Park. On their last day, they visited the Golden Bike Bridge, and a bracing view moved to Zhang Yiming. He shared the story of how he started the Tou Tiao with Tao Yi from South Coast Capital. When he was writing the business plan, he made a model prediction that Total had a chance to reach 100 million daily active users in five years. Cao Yi asked him how he planned to achieve that. Zhang Yiming laid out the market size of newsreader, the patronation rate, and then where he saw Total fit in. October 2016. Total surpassed 100 million DAUs a few months earlier than Zhang Yiming's prediction. Man, that level of precision in strategic planning is mind-blowing, right? The second successful tip, I guess, will be Jiang Yiming is really good at pick out excellent people. Out of all the HR work, Jiang Yiming places great importance on recruitment. He believes that hiring is most critical management task at Biden's and determining success of their strategy. Because of his focus and dedication to recruitment, he can confidently say that when a company had 500 employees, he knew everyone by name. 
And when the team grew to 1,300, he can proudly say that although not everyone was historically higher, but most of them were. Woo! Third successful tip will be the unwavering strategic determination. In 2012, today's headlines had already launched as an information platform. Zhang Yiming gathered a team of around 10 people for a meeting, discussing whether or not to build a personalized recommendation engine. This was something Zhang Yiming had already planned before starting the company, and he brought it up for discussion. So what was the outcome? Many team members backed out, saying that the team didn't have the genes or capability to pull it off. As we all know that personalized recommendation engines were the essence of Biden's existence, right? But when it was still just an idea, it was hard for the team to visualize or believe in it, even after hearing about it hundred times. This case happens in many companies, man. The founder wants to do more things or to do something, discusses it with the team. But since the ideas originated from the founder, others have limited information and source, making it hard to reach a consensus, so the idea gets stuck at that stage. The founder blames the team for not involving, and the team blames the founder for being stubborn. If nobody takes action, the company's growth become a big question mark. What did Zhang Yiming do? Since the team believed they didn't have the genes or capability, but this was a strategic move for the company. The leader, he took it upon himself. He relied on his imagination and online researching to create the first version of Biden's recommendation engine. Zhang Yiming firmly replied to the team. If we don't solve the problem of personalized and intelligent recommendations, our product will only achieve minor innovations and might get some mobile internet dividends. But we won't achieve fundamental breakthroughs or create real value. Zhang Yiming also provided solutions saying, we may not know now, but we can learn. And then he took the first step himself. Eventually, he swiftly formed a 20-member recommendation engine team, leading to the rest of the story. When it comes to strategic determination, Zhang Yiming is truly like a robotic executioner. Well, there's another very interesting phenomenon for the Bidens. You might be wondering where's the headquarters of Bidens, right? The company behind TikTok, Douyin, and today's headlines, right? You'd probably say, ah, oh, Beijing, I know. But hold up, are you sure about that? Biden has 40 office areas in Beijing, but none of them can be called the headquarters because they don't have one. You'd be like, no way! Why wouldn't they buy a fancy building and make it their headquarters with all that dough they got? Well, my friend, Zhang Yiming, the man behind Biden, has his own thoughts on that. Back in 2013, when he visited the US for the first time, he checked out the headquarters of Microsoft and Starbucks. And let me tell you, they gave him totally different vibes. Microsoft headquarters were all fancy and had a chill atmosphere, but employees there wasn't really in tune with the industry and the users. On the other hand, Starbucks had its headquarters and a regular building, but employees were felt a stronger connection with the outside world. Zhang Yiming was rogue to this and realized that as the company grows, it can feel into a comfortable state, right? Isolated from the outside, developing an internal perspective. So he admired Starbucks' approach and once said, once you have a huge luxurious headquarters, you start getting caught up in now or sell of hefting things like who has an office and who doesn't, who's in new office and who's in the old one. So I think this external unimportant things become a burden, it's just a plain tacky. And that's why ByteDance Dance became a company without headquarters. In fact, from the very beginning, they never even thought of setting up a physical headquarters. Zhang Yiming wants employees to walk without boundary with open communication and information flowing rapidly within the company. So starting in 2016, led by Xie Xing, he began developing their own office software called Feishui. From the instant messaging to documents, calendars, emails, meetings, and even approval processes, everything is handled on one platform. 
achieving two all in one. They also developed additional fishes like personal handbooks, fishing meetings, knowledge management, and smart tips. And how about the result? We can see that Bidens now have nearly 200 offices worldwide. Employees not only know clue where the headquarters is, but also their relationships with colleagues and supervisors are limited to level of online bodies. For instance, the chairman John Lindong and CEO Zhang Nan rarely meet online, they only have the fixed online meeting once a week. And during those meetings, they often have no idea where the attendees are located. For such a massive team spread across the country and even the world, Bidens runs on Feixin, making the whole company operate on the platform. If Bidens were to have a headquarters, it would only exist virtually. And that's Feixin. In a way, Bidens has truly embraced online work and taken it to the next level, my friend. You might be thinking, is Zhang Yiming and his company Bidens really perfect? Haven't they made any mistakes before? Well, guess what? They're not all perfect, my friend. At least when it comes to the gaming industry, they've tasted the bitter flavor of the future. On November 20th, Bidens announced that its gaming business, Hao Xi Guangnian, would undergo a massive downsizing. They plan to detach from games that have already been launched and perform well, while shutting down upcoming projects, except for a few innovative and, and technology-related ones. Actually, as early as 2018, Bidance has planned to venture into the gaming industry. In 2019, Chao Xi Guangyan was officially established the gaming brand, marking Bidance's full-scale entry into the gaming realm. According to public information, from 2090 to 2022, Binance invested in them at least 22 gaming-related cases involving 90 companies with an investment amount around 30 billion yuan. But that 30 billion yuan doesn't even include Pico. Binance not only spent 9 billion yuan to acquire Pico, but they also continue to invest in research, promotion, and operation after the acquisition. Estimated amount around 20 billion yuan. Additionally, a former employee from Chao Xi Guangyan reviewed in a recent article that the internal cost of employing a person in Chao Xi Guangyan was approximately 900,000 yuan per year, and its peak in 2022. Chao Xi Guangyan expanded to around 3,500 employees, even when some personnel changed due to business adjustments. The number of employees remained about 2,000. So, total labor cost in these five years would amount to over 10 billion yuan. And that's not even counting IP licensing phase, marketing expenses, and other costs. So, Biden spent a whopping 7 billion yuan to enter in the gaming and VR industry. Now, Chao Xi Guangyan is being scaled back. To sum it all up, Biden's top executives believe that the output of their gaming business doesn't justify the costs involved. They also see limited prospects for future growth and realize they can't compete with their main rivals. It's not a cash cow business that can be built in a short period. So, they decided to call it quits. By giving up the gaming business, ByteDance can focus its funds and energy on its co-business related to TikTok. They also get rid of underperforming assets and learn a valuable lesson. In fact, ByteDance has gradually realized that giving their traffic to their own games isn't profitable business. In other words, TikTok giving traffic to Chao Xi Guangyan is not as lucrative as giving it to external games. Let's we make the conclusion about the adventure for Biden's. They invested a lot of money and provided the resources, but couldn't get things done. The main reason is that they don't have a blockbuster product. A gaming industry insider mentioned that Biden's need products on the level of King of Glory and Genshin. Uh, to make advertising revenue in the gaming industry worthwhile. However, the domestic gaming industry is extremely competitive, and creating a product of that requires long-term investment and patience. Even then, success is not guaranteed, and risks are high. Clearly, the big players lack the necessary patience. Given the current environment, 
it's not surprising that Biden's decided to downsize. Moreover, phenomenal level products like King of Glory and Jian Xing are not something you can achieve just by throwing money at them. Market opportunities also play a significant role. The reality is that five years have passed and no product can compare to them. As the saying goes, it's not just about individual efforts. Historical processes also come into play. So, Biden has to accept his fate and maybe admit that they don't have much talent in the gaming industry. Of course, we believe that Biden won't stop there. Now, let's take a look at their ambitions in the field of AI. Biden has established a new AI department called Flow. According to the recruitment information, Flow is an AI innovation team under Biden, and they have already launched two products. Doubao and CC, domestically and internationally. They are also worked on other AI-related innovative products. And we can generally see this as Biden's shifting its focus to AI application development while shrinking its gaming business. Now, let's we try it. When I ask about its applications, it responds. I'm an artificial intelligence developed by Biden based on the Bark model. My name is Dobao. I can be applied in natural language processing, dialogue system, intelligent consumer service, content generation, intelligent assistance, education and training, among other scenarios. These are just some of my applications. And as technology continues to develop, my applications will expand further. On the other hand, CC is targeting the overseas market. It was launched in multiple markets in August 2023 and is currently available in 26 countries and regions, covering almost all areas globally except for mutual markets in Europe and America. On the other hand, CC is targeting the overseas market. It was launched in multiple markets in August 2023 and is currently available in 36 countries and regions, covering almost all areas globally except for mutual markets in Europe and Americas. In fact, as early as 2016, Biden established an AI lab that focused on researching in natural language processing machine learning, data mining, and other areas. It's like TikTok and Toutiao have frequently incorporated AI-generated content, attracting a steady stream of users. As a product similar to OpenAI, what other difference? Maybe some people want to ask this ding, problem. Well, Dobao's training data comes from a large amount of tasks on the internet, including news, blogs, novels, papers, and more. OpenAI, on the other hand, trains its models on tasks from various fields, including science, technology, art, and more. The Wells model structure is based on deep learning, utilizing multiple layers of a natural network, while OpenAI's model structure is based on reinforcement learning, employing deep reinforcement learning algorithms. The Wells main application scenarios are natural language processing, including task generation, question answering, translation, and more, while OpenAI's applications are more diverse, planning fields such as robotics, gaming, finance, and other. In summary, the differences between Dobao and OpenAI lie in their training data, model structural, and application scenarios. However, recently, there's been a troublesome issue worth mentioning. According to a report by The Verge, Biden has violated Microsoft and OpenAI's terms of use by using the Microsoft Azure OpenAI API to train their own AI models. It appears that within Biden, there's a project called Project C, which is their AI project, and Biden heavily rely on the OpenAI API throughout the development stage, including model training and evaluation. So, considering all this, we have to question how far Biden can really go on its AI exploration journey. Well, here's come to the last main question that you want to know. Why the heck hasn't TikTok gone public yet? Man, there have been so many rumors rolling around about TikTok Group's IPO. People were saying they would go public in the US or maybe in Hong Kong or do a full on IPO. 
or even split the company and list its parts separately. But guess what? None of these rumors have become reality, and their IPO plans are still up in the air. So what's the deal? How far away are they from going public? To find out, we're gonna understand TikTok's attitude towards going public. Back in October 2020, when ByteDance were asked about the possibility of a separate TikTok IPO in Hong Kong, they were like, yeah, we are concerned, but nothing set in stone yet. That statement caused a frenzy in the market. But everyone speculating about the timing of TikTok's IPO. There's no solid evidence or conclusion about it. And as time went on, TikTok's live commerce business started blowing up. And TikTok itself was expanding globally like crazy, right? But here's the weird part. In April 2021, just when everyone was buzzing about TikTok's IPO again, Dance came out and said, We ain't ready for the IPO. No plans for it at the moment. From considering a partial IPO to announcing no IPO plans, TikTok's stance on going public seems pretty unclear. So what's really going on? There are two main factors at play here. First, the global capital market is going through a lot of ups and downs. And if TikTok were to go public right now, its valuation might not be as high as it could be. So to ensure long-term success, TikTok needs to find a right timing and approach for its IPO. Plus, going public in the current market will come with a bunch of risks and uncertainties like market volatility, changes in investor sentiment, regulatory pressures, and all that jazz. Simply put, TikTok doesn't want to rush into an IPO. That might not be worth it. This also explains why they're focusing on optimizing their AI products and services, exploring new user groups and business areas. They're playing the long-term game, my friend. At this point, I think that's very coincident to Zhang Yiming's personality. The second factor is that TikTok's traffic boom is starting to fade away. Back in 2020, they had over 600 million daily active users, capturing 60% of China's 1 billion nexus. But now, they've surpassed 700 million daily active users and over 800 million monthly active users. They're getting darn close to hating that traffic ceiling, you know. However, despite their massive user base, TikTok group hasn't been able to launch a product that can rival TikTok's success. So, because they're not feeling too confident about going public without a blockbuster product, they're holding off on the IPO. Understandable, really, we can't see for sure how far TikTok is from going public. But one thing's for certain, they need to channel more energy and resources into innovative projects and find new growth points and business models instead of rushing to an IPO. In the end, we have witnessed the Biden's journey from its founding to becoming the world's largest unicorn in just 11 years. That's crazy young for an internet powerhouse. Since they haven't gone public yet, they still have the freedom and flexibility that most public companies don't have. So the future of finance is still wide open. Who knows, by the end of the third decade of the 21st century, will they claim the top spot on the global internet leaderboard? We will have to wait and see, my friend.